Hey guys, and welcome back to another Foundations Friday. This week we're talking all about prosthetics. I wanted to talk to you guys about the three main casting materials for prosthetics and the pros and cons of each material. I'm going to be starting out with the easiest and most cost-effective material to cast prosthetics in, which is gelatin. I touched on gelatin and the different uses of it last week, so check out that video somewhere around here. But I just wanted to talk about it in the sole capacity of making appliances. So like I said, gelatin is going to be your most cost-effective material to cast in as you can get all of the ingredients at your local grocery store to make a homemade version of it. So the pros of gelatin are going to be the cost. Very cheap. Second pro, it's very accessible. You can get gelatin and the ingredients to make prosthetic gelatin pretty much anywhere no matter where you are. Another pro is the ease of use. The edges are very easy to blend with the astringent witch hazel. Also gelatin can look very very realistic by simply tinting it with any form of powder foundation. Now onto the cons of gelatin. Gelatin is a very heavy material so you're not going to want to make any sort of thicker prosthetics out of gelatin because they will tend to want to pull away from your face after wearing them for a long time. Even the cheek parts of my cat nose prosthetic, which are about half an inch thick, do tend to want to pull away after I've been wearing the prosthetic for a while. Now also kind of by the same token, since gelatin is such a dense material, it doesn't breathe. It's not porous, so an actor or a model or whoever's in a gelatin appliance can quickly overheat wearing it and all that sweat underneath it is just gonna pool in there and the prosthetic's gonna start pulling away from the face. You're gonna have all sorts of sweat pooled under there and then because of all that heat, the gelatin can also start to re-liquify. Also, since it's very dense, it doesn't move with your face. You can't emote very well while wearing a gelatin piece, so it kind of gives a static expression of whatever you sculpted. But if you're just starting out and you just kind of want to dabble in making prosthetics, this is a great material to use. The next material I'm going to be talking about is foam latex. This was actually the first prosthetic I ever made, throwing it back. Um, I'm still so proud of this thing. This is the first piece I ever sculpted, molded, and cast. Foam latex is going to be your mid-range material in terms of price. The first pro to foam latex, it's very porous. It's very breathable, so an actor wearing foam latex for long periods of time is not going to really overheat. Another pro to foam latex is how expressive it is. When you have a prosthetic made of foam latex on, especially if it is a fairly thin piece, you can get so expressive in it, it will move with your face, you can furrow your brow, smile, make all sorts of facial expressions, and the piece will move with you. Cons to foam latex are gonna be that you do have to have special tools in order to make it. You have to have some form of stand mixer to whip it up. It is something that you have to mix and you do have to do it in good ventilation because it does release ammonia. This is not something you really want to do in a tiny enclosed space because the fumes will get to you. And you do need a special oven for your molds because you can't just stick it in your everyday oven at your house because of the ammonia that the material is releasing when it cooks. It basically ruins your oven and any food that you make in your oven after that point can become toxic. So you do have to have a special oven, but you can build your own foam latex oven for, I've seen plans out there to make for under $100. So if you are someone who's very handy and you're good at building things and kind of contracting work and electrical work and stuff like that, or you know someone who can, then you are good to go. I know a couple different people who have built their own foam latex ovens. I hope to this year at some point build my own foam latex oven so that way I don't have to always make my prosthetics out of gelatin. A pro slash con of foam latex can be the edges. If you don't know how to sculpt prosthetics correctly and you don't feather your edges of your sculpt down enough and you don't put a cutting edge in your mold, 
to stop the material. You can get really, really thick edges to your pieces, which can then be really hard to blend because nothing is gonna dissolve foam latex like witch hazel dissolves gelatin. But if you sculpt everything correctly and put a nice sharp cutting edge before you mold everything, then you can get really, really, really nice thin edges that you don't even have to worry about. And foam latex is probably my favorite material out of the three I'm gonna be talking about today. It's just the most versatile. Another slight con to foam latex is that you can't tint it like you can gelatin to get a really realistic skin finish. So if you're doing something like an old age makeup or something that's supposed to be very, very realistic and lifelike, then if you're not an experienced painter, it can be kind of hard to get that effect because it doesn't have a very lifelike finish. It is a foam material, so it doesn't have that same depth but the last material I'm going to be talking about is silicone. Silicone is going to be your most expensive material to cast in. Pros to silicone. It can look very lifelike. It has a very realistic give to it. The texture of it is very lifelike and skin-like. You can tint silicone to get the perfect skin shade for whatever model or actor you're putting the piece on. Cons to silicone. The edges can be kind of finicky, just like with foam latex. If you didn't sculpt something properly or you didn't end up molding it correctly, you can end up with really thick edges that can be really hard to conceal. So obviously another con to silicone is the price point. It is not something that I would recommend for beginners trying unless you wanna try like third degree, you're not experienced in working with them. It can be a lot of trial and error and when you're dealing with something that costs so much money, you don't really wanna have trial and error. I hope you enjoyed this Foundations Friday and I hope you learned a little something and maybe have an idea of materials you want to try out. All of my social media links will be listed in the description below if you'd like to check out more of my work. If there's something you'd like to see for a Tutorial Tuesday or a Foundations Friday, or if you just have a question or anything like that, be sure to let me know in the comments. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye guys!